It's a cool deck to me because a lot of the tools that allow Jeskai Ascensi to go off, things like Retraction Helix, Dragon's Mantle, those play nicely in heroic decks anyway. So Glenn's deck has the op op option of actually going off and going infinite, just like a Jeskai Ascensi combo deck can, or playing a more normal heroic game plan as well. So two dimensions to this deck, and it'll be very cool to see in action. Hart is on Mardu mid-range, so we'll see what his red, white, black deck can do. You saw Jones start for the Temple of Triumph. Looks like he kept the scry on the top. Hart will play a Bloodstained Mire, pass the turn back. We are underway here, round one of 10 here in Oakland. If you do want to get on the conversation at SCG Live, hashtag SCGOAK for your tweets all weekend long. Patrick and I will be looking forward to interacting with you guys as Glenn will play in a Crone Crusader on turn number two. Not as good on two. Pretty good on one, though. Correct. 430 players in attendance today. So it should be fun. And that puts us at nine or 10. We're a 10 ball. We're a 10. Okay. We're a healthy, we're a healthy 10. Jola set among the players. A foil swamp, your favorite. I know you do love the foils. It's from Invasion, I believe, which is pretty cool. That is an era where I enjoyed playing with foil cards every now and again. Really? I had, so, I had four foil guys Skyfolk in my first PTQ winning deck. Nice. Yeah. 2-2 two, two flyer for a blue and a green. Has been outclassed by Ice Feather Raven. If I had access to that bad boy, forget about it. Yeah, my goodness. My goodness. Let's see what Harkin put together on his second turn of the game. You saw Jones just play the Crusader, a flooded strand, and pass the turn back. There is a mountain there for Hart. He'll kick it back over to Jones. That can represent quite a few things, Lightning Strike and Magma Jet among them. What's really cool about Glenn's deck is the he's really maximizing the plus one, plus one aspect of just guy ascendancy, which is often something the decks don't really care about, but it means even if he gets an ascendancy in play and doesn't go infinite, he can still generate a lot of advantage. Joe's going to play a Dragon's Mantle, trigger the Heroic on the Crusader, so we'll get a Soldier token as well, and of course draw a card, so a pretty good start to his third turn here. And we'll see what else Glenn can put together. I think Brogan with a Lightning Strike in hand and elected not to use it. A little surprising there. Seems like a good spot. Jones going to play Temple of Triumph, top card to the bottom. And if he is waiting for a better target in Glenn's deck, he may be disappointed. However, he, he doesn't know that. That's the big trick, right? Yes. He has, he has no idea that this is as good as it gets out of Glenn's yeah. deck. What Glenn's deck can do? Well, not many people know. There is a Lightning Strike. That'll take care of the Ukron Crusader. So Jones able to draw a card off the Dragon's Mantle. And then he does pass the turn back after getting a damage. And Hart will untap and draw a card. Case of Koilos is what he's found. And that'll be his third land before passing the turn back over to Jones. Jones going to sacrifice his flooded train here and search up a land, either a plains or an island, of course. And you can see a little bit of the awkwardness with, with the Mardu mana base here. It's stretched in a couple different directions and Vermaz in hand, but uh, Brogan not able to cobble together double white by turn three. Jones electing for an island here, so it looks like all of his mana is online, even though it is a Jeskai deck. You're not going to find Mantis Rider here. Again, a Chrono Crusader, Seeker of the Way. Those are fours, and then two copies of Vanguard of Ramaz. Also a nice synergy there with Jeskai Ascendancy. Indeed. Crank out some cats. <laughs> Pump them up. Well, Jones at the ready here. Looks like he does have a copy of Jeskai Ascendancy in his hand right now. So he will untap. He will take a draw step. It's his fourth turn of the game. Looks like he may have drawn a copy of Defiant Strike. I see a Springleaf Drum here as well in his hand. Again, this is, this is a brewski. Oh, boom. yeah, this is all over the place. You know, talking to him yesterday, he was pretty happy with what he had put together. Here's the drum. This is a Jeskai Ascendancy. And he'll pass the turn back. What comes next? Nobody knows. Glenn must need a lot of mana because giving up on being able to play the Spring Lake Drum after the fact and loot with the Ascendancy means he must have something lined up with his mana for next turn. Mm -hmm. Hart's going to play a Mountain. He'll tap four mana. Going to take one. We'll see what he's got this turn. That's a copy of Butcher the Horde. This is the shields down. Glenn's going to quickly untap. I don't know if he's got some sort of crazy thing to do this turn, but when you tap out and allow your opponent to have Jeskai Ascendancy, you've got to be a little scared. Oh, of course. These decks can go off from a pretty low base. Now remember, Glenn's not trying to go off with mana creatures. There's no green splash, there's no carry added. So he's probably safe, but 
this could be a very explosive turn here for Glenn. It looks like we've got ourselves a vanguard of Bramaz. I'm sure Brogan's going to want to know what that does. We're going to drum it up here. And whenever you cast a spell that targets the vanguard, put a plus one, plus one white cat soldier creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield. This is like a Crow and Crusaders five and six. We've got ourselves a retraction helix on the soldier token. So now that thing's going to be able to bounce stuff. Glenn's also going to trigger the Jeskai Ascendancy. We are having a ball. Yes. Early in the morning from Oakland. Creatures will untap. Again, Jones will loot, draw and discard. And there goes the Dragon Mantle. So now he's going to activate this, pick up the drum. Is this infinite? Oh, this is called, we call this doing it, yes. There is, there is the drum. This will untap everything. See, this is the infinite that you're looking for. Because you can tap the Vanguard of Mass plus the drum to make mana, mm -hmm. then bounce the drum, cast the drum, that untaps both. Glenn is currently, yeah, you see his hands. I am demonstrating the loop. I'm going to do this a lot. Because I was a little surprised when he discarded the Dragon Mantle, but he doesn't need the Dragon Mantle. So now this is the fun part of combo decks. He's explaining to his opponent right now. So I'm going to do this many times. Do you, are you okay with that? I'm demonstrating the loop. Brogan is tapped out with the Butcher of the Horde, so there is nothing that Brogan can do about this. So Glenn is going to go through his deck quite a bit here. As there goes a Flooded Strand, among many other cards momentarily. But I don't think Brogan should concede here because he's not even playing against a conventional Ascendancy deck, clearly. So I want to see as much of this as possible. Well, of course. How are you going to kill me, for example? What can you do? As Glenn is going to continue to draw and discard. There we go. And the big thing here for Brogan, as you mentioned, is picking up information. Yep. Seeing what's in Glenn's deck. We, of course, have the deck list in front of us, which is pretty nice. So we know that he's got four copies of A Johnny's Presence. He's got four copies of Defiant Strike, three copies of Raise the Alarm. He's got some really radical things going on here. Two copies of Tygon Scheming, four copies of Treasure Cruise. And getting to see these Raise the Alarms going to the graveyard is a huge win, even. Glenn got to figure out what to discard now. So remember that all of this is happening with, you know, Glenn's creatures getting plus one, plus one the entire way through. Yep. So the soldier token will eventually become lethal. It's time to go for a cruise. And it looks like there might be a little bit of mana floating on all this jazz. And it looks like Brogan has said, you know, well, oh, that's exactly what Glenn can do. Excuse me. The way he gets through is he bounces the creature. Exactly. With, yeah, he bounces the Butcher of the Horde with the creature that has retraction helix. That thing is going to be big enough, and it actually has haste. So cruise is going to resolve. And he'll be able to attack for a whole lot of damage. So Glenn Jones is going to win game number one here over Brogan Hart. Jeskai heroic combo up a game here over Mardu midrange. And it seemed like a pretty innocent start there from Glenn. Not a whole lot was going on. If I was in Brogan's seat, I also probably would have felt pretty comfortable tapping out there for Butcher of the Horde. But Glenn able to draw his entire deck and make an unlimited, unlimited creature. What's the worst that can happen when Jeskai Ascendant is in play? Oh. Well, right. your opponent gets to draw their whole deck and make all their creatures infinite and infinite. That's the worst thing that can happen, which is what Glenn was able to do. I suppose pretty bad. That's pretty bad. We'll take a look at the sideboards here. We will start with Brogan. He has three Crackling Dooms, three Anger of the Gods, two Glare of Heresy, two Nyx Fleece Ran, a Suspension Field, and then Hostilities, an Elspeth Suns Champion, two Banishing Lights. The real prize here to me looks like the Glare of Heresies and the Anger of the Gods, keeping Glenn's board contained. Glare can also take care of an Ascendancy, which is really nice. Two copies of Banishing Light can fulfill much of the same role. And I think that end hostility is probably a bit slow for this matchup, but I may want to bring it in anyway. It's one copy, and Brogan has slower tools in his deck that he can afford to cut. On Jones' side, do you think his main deck is wacky? There are four copies of Monastery Swift Spear on the board. When you need to go beat downs. Yes, he said he does not like that card against the Corsair Crew Fix decks, but he likes it against everything else, so I imagine they'll be coming in here. Three copies of Disdainful Stroke, three Glare of Heresy, two copies of Ride Down. You guessed it, a barrage of boulders. Naturally. Decks that can block. A stubborn denial. I would imagine you want it for decks that can generate a lot of blockers. Yep. Because Glenn's, Glenn's deck doesn't really have any way to punch through a sea of chump blockers. He's playing against a deck that plays with Hordling Outburst, for example, which Brogan's deck does, in fact. Uh, the board can get clogged up and he may not be able to punch through. So one barrage of boulders makes a lot of sense. These one ofs are really powerful in this deck, too, because when he goes off, he draws his whole deck. Mm -hmm. So he's able to find it. Uh, stubborn denial and then a copy of Triton Tactics. Okay. I'm not sure what the tactics is there for, but I, I love it. 
Well, I love it nonetheless. Trying tactics may be good in this matchup. There's a lot of damage based removal in a lot of Bardu decks, so plus O plus three is nice. There's a lot of big clunky creatures, so being able to untap and block. I, I can see it coming in here. I sure. I'm not sure if it's for a specific card or if it's just for matchups where it's likely to fizzle a removal spell. If it's for the latter, then I can see Glenn bringing it in. One thing I do expect to see is Monastery Swift Spear from the sideboard for him. Yeah. He was adamant yesterday when talking to him that he loves this card against non course of Crucifix decks. Makes a lot of sense. And Corsair decks are so prevalent that it makes sense, even if you want it for every non corsair deck in the field, that you would still want it in your sideboard. Now, you and I have talked quite a bit about SCG Game Night and hoping that it would be turkey time here for November. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Okay. It's all about the worm token, my friend. Which isn't so bad. No, this is not so bad. We've had this worm feature before on some playmats and deck boxes, very well received as a fishing hat on, and it's fishing with a human as bait, which is pretty sweet. This is the token and foil for game night. This program has been modified no longer just on Wednesday nights. Stores run it whatever day of the week you want to, sanctioned, unsanctioned, whatever. SCG, uh, starcygames.com slash game night for more information. If you want to get on board in December or for that kit, make sure to sign up now. Get a head start on that. SCG game night, again, every week in November, no longer on Wednesdays. Any format you want, just bringing some more organized play to the local store. Some fun and casual play, whatever night of the week you want to run it. Plus, look at that pin. Look at that guy. He just hang out. He's even got the hat on the pin. Yep. I can respect that. It's very that, nice. That's just good design. That is great design. So Glenn Jones up a game here with a wacky brew and Jeskai heroic combo. But it all revolves around the most important card in the deck, which is Jeskai Ascendancy, the big problem card. But unlike other builds of Ascendancy decks, it, Glenn's check may be able to win in the absence of Jeskai Ascendancy. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big problems. We've had the combo deck a lot on camera. It has a pedigree. It has a pro tour top eight. But we watch games all the time where it just doesn't find an ascendancy or doesn't find carry added and the other mana creatures get killed and can never go off. Against every deck in the format, this is an issue. Glenn's deck, well, he can sort of just win with a suite of heroic creatures and some pump effects. Some treasure cruises too? Yep. Maybe keeps him in the game. He does have four copies of that card and we know we'll see a lot of that tomorrow. Didn't expect to see it today. That's for sure. Has not seen a lot of standard play. Dig Through Time has been the marquee card drawer thus far. And it has been a delight. One heck of a magic card Dig Through Time is. Yeah. Still bizarre that those two cards appear in the same set because they are so similar to one another, but different decks want different things. Yeah. Options. Yeah. That's what's nice. Broken Heart will be on the play here for game at number two here from Oakland. We do appreciate you guys joining us early this morning. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, StarCityGames.com Open Series, again, here in Oakland, California. We've got 430 players. That's 10 rounds of magic, as you do know. And we'll work our way towards our eight players we'll be playing tomorrow morning. And eventually, we'll, get, we'll crown a standard open champion. And Glenn's deck is very exciting to me. I would like to see this make a deep run. Uh, as would I. As would I. It can, do some, uh, it can do some different things. I do like the fact that he has Monastery Swift Spear in the sideboard, maybe to catch up on it off guard. But the big thing he gets to do this weekend is just take people by surprise. They really have no clue what he's up to. And this deck can look, just look like a heroic deck doing normal heroic stuff, and in one turn play Ascendancy and win the game. Mm -hmm. We have not seen this dimension out of heroic decks before. We haven't really seen a lot of heroic decks either. This is just a, this is a brew through and through. And I was expecting to see more of it, it, more heroic decks in general, just because the mana base is improved. Yeah. That was the biggest issue. If you look at the Black Pro Tour, those mana bases were unplayable in my mind. They were quite bad. But the blue-white builds of heroic pick up Flooded Strand. The red-white builds of it picked up Battlefield Forge in the previous set. So I expected to see more of that. Because the deck's very explosive, just the mana was always a challenge. Both players are going to take a look at their opening hand. Hart is going to send it back, as will Jones. So it's time for a little mulligan action. Both players will draw up their best six that they can find. The big question for both these decks, though, is can they stand up to the Jeskai Menace? Can they beat Mantis Rider and friends? I would imagine Glenn's deck is not great against that, just because they can get a threat into play and then just play a bunch of removal spells. I think Mardu, on the other hand, generally has a solid matchup with Jeskai. You can keep them off of getting a threat in play, and then your stuff is very hard for them to answer. Mardu has the, the most density, the highest density, of cheap removal that works against Jeskai, and I think that's a big part of the puzzle. You can't let them connect with creatures. You have to respond to everything immediately. I do like the Mardu deck. It's going to go in a lot of different directions. There's a lot of different ways that you can build it, but that's one of the things that I generally like about this format, truth be told, is there's a lot of ways that you can build every deck. 
That's what makes it really fun. It's not about linear strategy so much as it is about cards and wanting to shift your deck around to match up against specific cards. I generally think that's a lot more fun than, oh, this is a, you know, 40 burn spell deck, or is this a 20 counter spell deck, where, uh, you know, adaptations are very challenging. A lot of the cards you play, it doesn't make much of a difference, but in this standard format, especially since so much of it is about creature combat, the stats on your creatures matter a lot, the specific removal spells you play matter a lot. So you're going to see people switching up stock lists all the time. Both players are going to take a look at their opening six here. Again, Hart will be on the play. He mulliganed very quickly the last game. And it looks like they're both okay at this point. We're underway in game number two. Bloodstained Mire going to kick things off here for Brogan. Jones going to play a Temple of Triumph. Top card stays on top very quickly as Hart will sacrifice the Mire, go down to 19, and it's time for either a Swamp or a Mountain. And it will be a Swamp. So no... No blue-white temples in Glenn's list. He's, he's just touching blue for Ascendancy and Helix. Yeah. So this is basically a red-white deck. What he's done here, after talking with them, is you know he worked on a deck that had Obelesca Verde uh, okay. for Grand Prix Los Angeles that he really liked, and he decided to see if he could work Ascendancy into it. And that's what, uh, that's what this is an attempt of, as Hart's going to draw a card here for turn number two. There is a Battlefield Forge for passing the turn back over to Jones. Jones very quickly draws, plays his Mystic Monastery, passes the turn back. You have to imagine he's a little landlight if he was doing that. As here's Ma Magma Jet at the end of turn. Hart's going to go down to 18, scry two. And Brogan must really need something in particular. I don't know if it's a land drop or some action because Magma Jet's very good against Glenn's check. Just any instant speed removal spell is going to be valuable against Glenn. One on top, one on bottom. Scry done resolving. Third turn here for Brogan. There's the third land. It's the Temple of Triumph, so a little Scry action here. Looks like we're going to leave that card on top. Pass the turn back over to Jones. Jones will draw. There's an island. This is a copy of Seeker of the Way. Pass the turn back. With just one mana open, what's the worst that could happen? Well, this is why I was... Not a huge fan of Brogan using the Magma Jet, unless he needed to find a third land or something. Because instant speed removal is so good against Glenn's deck. It's a lightning strike. And Jones is going to use a copy of a Johnny's Presence to protect the Seeker of the Way. Presence, again, a four of in Jones's deck. A card that he uses to protect Seeker of the Way, and then he can really quite easily go the distance with the Seeker. And also the turn he's going off, giving things indestructible, can be really good as well. Yeah. So this plays a lot of a lot of different roles in Glenn's deck. Primarily just one mana, keep a guy alive. But there's other corner cases that can come up where Johnny's presence is really valuable. We've seen cards like God's Willing. Yes. Before, especially in Just Sky decks. Mitaj Zadokai using that to great effect to win his Grand Prix last weekend. Broken Heart going to play a mountain. That's land number four. Well, last time you played a fourth lane, you tapped out for Butcher the Horde. You didn't get to play anymore. Exactly. Although there's no ascendancy in play this time, so a little bit safer. Hark going to slide some mana around here. What do we have? A copy of Anger of the Gods. Bye bye, Seeker. And the Seeker, of course, is exiled by Anger of the Gods. And that's significant because Glensek is playing with Treasure Crew, so. Mm -hmm. Got to keep that clean. It is interesting. You can see in Jones's hand, he does have a copy of Jeskai Ascendancy. If he does want to take the opportunity to cast that now, there's kind of a backward situation, right, where if you hold it, you could get Thought Seized. But if you play it with really nothing on the board, you don't know if your opponent has a copy of a card like Utter End or other ways to get enchantments off the board. Banishing Light as well. Mm -hmm. But the Ascendancy being able to draw and discard every time Glenn plays a spell, especially with Glenn having Treasure Cruise in hand, it just makes everything so much easier going forward. It's our first Goblin Rabble Master of the day. That'll generate a Goblin token, and for one we go. And the follow-up is a Seeker of the Way. Broken Heart is empty-handed, and Glenn Jones has got to play some catch-up because he is behind. But it looks like he's got a lot to work with in his hand. And with Broken empty-handed, it's possible the Seeker of the Way plus Glenn's hand can make it much larger than anything Broken can generate in combat. Jones is going to play his Flooded Strand as well. He'll sacrifice that go down. A little bit lower. Search up a planes. We'll shuffle and present here, and we'll see what else Jones has to do on this turn. 
Because again, Hart is empty handed with a Goblin Rabble Master, a Goblin Token, and a Seeker of the Way, along with five lands in play. I think Glenn can be pretty aggressive casting spells to try to eat things inside of combat with the Seeker because Broken's empty handed. If he draws a removal spell for the Seeker, he's likely going to be playing it before combat to get a trigger off of his own Seeker. So. If Brogan just moves into combat and attacks, I think Glenn can safely assume that Brogan drew either a creature or a land. I think that is a relatively safe assumption. Hart will draw a card. Didn't get a great look at it. It looked like it was a land, though. And we will see. Jones patiently waiting with that two mana available. Rabble Master looks like it's going to generate another goblin token here in just a moment. Though it is possible that he, didn't, that he didn't miss the trigger, it looks like they are waiting on another goblin token here. So, yep. there that is. So, everybody into the red zone. Seeker looks like it's going to block a goblin token. And then Jones definitely weighing things here. Seeker of the way is probably his most important card in play right now. He can't afford to lose it, and so he's going to be pretty conservative here. He could go and try to block the Seeker and cast a Defiant Strike, but I think Glenn's saying, I don't really care too much about what I get off the table in particular, just trying to keep my life total high and keep the Seeker in play. Well, Jones going to go reaching for some mana. It's time for an... Oh, actually, Monster Associate, excuse me. This could be an interesting turn. You see the Defiant Strike there in Jones' hand. He has potential to deal a lot of damage. He has at least one copy of Treasure Cruise, I think actually two. Yep. And he's going to go to Attackers. This is a Defiant Strike. That's going to trigger Ascendancy. I suppose that will untap both creatures as well. Heart is going to cast a Lightning Strike with the triggers on the stack. So just guy Ascendancy is going to trigger. Monster Ace Whisperer is going to untap. Jones will draw. And it'll be time to discard here in just a second. And Brogan was quite disciplined with using his Lightning Strike last turn. Mm -hmm. Did not pull the trigger on it. Got paid off here as Glenn made a move. You saw Jones draw and discard for the Ascendancy and then draw a card for the Defiant Strike. So some more damage will come across here. Swissbro will be back on defense. Jones loading up his Graveyard 2 to work his way towards Treasure Cruise. He discarded one, but he has another one. He's going to play another copy of the Swift Spear before passing the turn back over to Hart, who will draw. Looks like he found a copy of Butcher of the Horde. Butcher's a huge draw here. So he's going to organize this mana, and you're right, that is a big draw. Tapping the necessary four. There is the 5 4 flyer. And fortunately for him, there is a nice creature to sacrifice. Although this isn't too bad for Glenn here, as it does mean that he gets to double block the Rabble Master safely. Looks like now, he, he may want to be doing something chumper. else. He yeah. may just want to chump and try to go off next turn. And his hand might be forced because he's got very little going on and will almost certainly die next turn. Looks like he's going to put his Monastery Swifters like this. So a creature will bite the dust. Jones left with one of those creatures as Swiss Rear beats the Goblin in battle. It's 13 to 2. The question is, can Jones go off this turn and deal a boatload of damage? He's certainly going to try. This will be a treasure cruise. So there goes the whole bin. Also going to trigger the Ascendancy. So first things first, draw discard. Doesn't look like Disdainful Stroke is all that useful. Going to discard another Ascendancy. Now the cruise is going to resolve. So one, two, and three. Can he keep going and somehow deal 13? Well, I feel like he needs to find either a second creature or a spring leaf drum before realistically anything of substance can happen. Yeah. He's at two with a mana confluence in hand, so he can play and tap that. But it's going to be hard for him to do everything that he needs to do right now. There's also an Ajani's presence in the group, too. I think, as you mentioned, the drum is probably the most important one. Yes. Then he, then he starts making mana off of his one mana spells, or at least they're free. Yep. Yeah. And he does have three of those in his deck. So he's taking a long look at the grip here. Disdainful Stroke among the cards he's looking at. That's, a, that's the least useful. I'm actually surprised he brought it in, because the Bardo deck doesn't have a lot of fours that he cares about. Most of the good spells here seem like cheap removal spells, 
or anger the gods, which the same full stroke doesn't really help that much against. It seems like Butcher the Horde and threats like that are not that good against Glenn's deck. Could be a little bit of a hedge against Utter End, I suppose. Utter End, maybe Murderous Cut. There's yeah, a couple things. A couple of things. I, I'm in agreement with you. It, you know, a card like Butcher the Horde, even though it did show up and have a big impact last turn, by and large, I think you're not too scared of that card. It could have been any creature. Yeah. You know, if it's Bermaz next turn, Glenn's probably in the same spot. Joe's trying to figure out exactly what his outs are in this situation. Again, Springleaf Drum seems to be the most important card. See if he can find one of those. He's, that's the I'm doing math look. I've had that before, but really, but really I'm not actually thinking about anything, and I, I would be doing what Glenn does, which is picking him up and trying again for game number three. Well, he's thinking if there's any draw that he can get at that point, but yeah. if he spends a mana to draw a card with something like Defiant Strike in hand, he might just be bottlenecked. At that point, he may not even be drawing to Springleaf Drum anymore, yeah. so he has to just give it up. Hey, we'll pack it in. Broken Heart does win game number two against Glenn Jones. Mardu Midrange and Jeskai Hero combo going to game number three. Looks like both players might read sideboard here. While they do that, we will talk about the rest of the 2014 Open Series schedule. It's November, man. We are heading the home stretch, and I can actually tell you this without even looking at the board at this point. Oh, really? So we're in Oakland this week. This Close weekend. your eyes. So next weekend we are in, <laughs> I'm closing my eyes right now. Next weekend we are in Columbus, the 8th and 9th. The following weekend is Grand Prix, New Jersey. And then the weekend after that is I've forgotten. It's yes. Richmond. Well done. Right. Well That's done. That's the weekend I'm off. I can tell you all of them with my eyes closed. That's the weekend I'm off. That, that doesn't count. Then we go to Atlanta, and then in December we are in Portland, then Seattle for the Invitational, and then Roanoke for the Players' It feels like it counts that you got that wrong. It feels like it counts. It does count. I should have gotten that. But I, I, I blank because that's the one show I'm not doing. I know. That's the weekend where you're, where you're going to be off, I think. I believe seeing Michigan State Rutgers. Yes. Nice. Hanging out with my good friend Mark Herberholz and Gary Aran. That's Pro Tour champion Mark Herberholz Pro to Tour you. Pro Tour champion. You get that right. Hall yeah. of Fame candidate should get more love than he does. He's got to come back and play some matches here. Yeah, I know. He's got to do the Huey Jensen trail, man. He's got to let. He's got to remind everyone how awesome he is. I know. I think people have forgotten. They definitely have forgotten. It's a tough thing, you know. The uh, Magic kind of its popularity and you know its coverage was probably at its least followed in the mid 2000s. So a lot of players who have results that come from that era, they are just they are just forgotten. At Mark at the top of the list. A Pro Tour champion. During Time Spiral, that the, that era of sets, he was perhaps the best player slash deck builder on the planet. Did not want to play against Mark Herbold's in tournament. I can promise you that much. Anyhow, he's a big Michigan State fan. He's a graduate. We'll be hanging out that Richmond Open weekend, going to the Rutgers MSU game. I'll be working, but it's okay. Oh, don't give me that I'll be working thing. I'm in Portland while you're going down to play in it, so. It's okay. I'll bite the bullet. I'll work for you. Thanks, man. No problem. That's what teamwork is all about. Go Scarlet Knights. Oh, they're going to go all right. Yeah. I got a feeling they are not going to get close to winning that game. After, but you can cheer as much as you'd like. After Ohio State beat them 7 million to zero a couple weeks ago, I, I'm doubtful, but hope spring is eternal. Anything can happen. Anything could happen. That's why they play the games. We're about to play a third game here between Jones and Hart. See if the Jeskai Heroic combo can find a way to get a, a second game here to win the match. Either way, I think we might be sitting down with Glenn Jones in the sideboard. I believe so, too. And this is going to be, I, I believe, one of the rougher matchups for him in the room, just because Lightning Strike and Magma Jet are, I'm not saying Glenn can't beat them. They're just not the cards he wants to play against. I think something like Obzon that has much clunkier removal spells, he'd be a lot happier playing against. Those three-man removal spells, big difference. Yes. Big difference. Looks like Jones is going to take a mulligan pretty quickly here. I imagine his deck does do this quite a bit. There are some weird interchanging pieces with the deck. So, you know, I imagine mulligans do happen quite a bit here for Jones. Although less so than the normal Ascendancy deck, I would well, say. Well, that's true, yeah. Because the other his deck mulligans like crazy. His, hand, his hands of creatures and lands are fine. Yeah. Whereas that's not really true of the Ascendancy deck. Hart can keep his seven. He's happy enough. I should say the classic, the typical Ascendancy deck. Yeah, I think as we go, there will be more versions of the deck, though. Well, Ascendancy is a very open-ended card. There's a lot of things you can do with it. A lot of the builds of the Ascendancy deck don't even care about plus one, plus one to all my creatures. It's, yeah. it's irrelevant, you know? And some builds like Glenn's over here care very much about that effect. Happy enough with just the draw discard aspect of it. 
which is, and the untapped too, which is pretty powerful. Jones gonna keep. Mystic Monastery will start off game number three. Hart will draw a card. He's got his own Triland there, Nomad Outpost. It's like Glenn with multiple copies of Treasure Cruise again, and not a lot to fill up his graveyard, just a land, a disdainful stroke, two lands. Mm -hmm. It'll be hard for him to get to it, but we shall see. Hart gonna play a Bloodstained Mire, pass turn back over to Jones. Jones will quickly draw a card, didn't get a great look at it. But he will play another copy. Mystic Monastery attack here for two. Hart will take the two. He's down to 18. So it doesn't look like a Magma Jet or a, a Lightning Strike here for Brogan. It's going to sacrifice that Bloodstained Mire. Go down to 17. Got a Swamp or a Mountain coming here. And Glenn, with a Chrome Crusader in hand, elected not to cast it, showing a lot of respect for Anger of the Gods next turn. A card to be fearful of. It's hard for him to beat. Yeah. There is a Swamp. So we'll see what Hart has on his third turn here in just a moment. Maybe he does have Anger of the Gods. A card that we saw the last game, he was willing to trade one for one with the Seeker. Well, it's, he needs to keep Glenn's board contained as much as possible. And especially after game one, I would be really aggressive about using these sweepers because Glenn was able to kill him from a very low base. Mm -hmm. So I would not get too fancy. Battlefield Forge is land number three. That's also the second source of red mana if we do choose to go the Anger of the Gods route. Decisions, decisions here for Hart. Looking at a stocked hand. Wouldn't be surprised if he just passed the turn back. Keep in mind, he also knows about Raise the Alarm being Glenn's deck too, which mm -hmm. influences things. So even from this base, I think Glenn can hypothetically win the game next turn if he has something like Raise the Alarm into a loaded grip. Yeah. There's the anger. That'll clear things out of the way. This is a copy of a Chrome Crusader. Jones will pass the turn back with Disdainful Stroke at the ready. Hart going to draw cards, a copy of Caves of Colios. And Glenn not playing the land in his hand in case if he draws an ascendancy, so he wants to have some spare stuff to loot away. Absolutely. Bloodstained Mire, sacrifice that. We'll see if Brogan does have a four drop, like a card like Butcher the Horde. Well, Juicy that would be target. great for Glenn's Disdainful Stroke. Glenn right now is just crossing his fingers and hoping Brogan taps out for a four. Yep. Because he can counter it and then maybe draw something to get a little action going. Right now, his hand is a dead end. Though Brogan does have a copy of Goblin Rabble Master his hand, he will go with the Butcher of the Horde. And I don't think that Glenn can counter that fast enough. There is a painful stroke. One card in the graveyard from Treasure Cruise, as Jones will draw a card. There's a Flooded Strand. This is just a boring old attack for one. See a mana influence there, pass the turn back. Jones trying to work his way towards a treasure cruise. His heart will draw a card. The land is now two cards in the graveyard plus four mana, so he's kind of getting there, but... There's a Sarkin, and that's going to fire down and take care of the Crusader. Pretty scared of that one. That is a risky play from there from Brogan, because if Glenn has some way to protect his Akroan Crusader, he saves it and then untaps and attacks the Sarkin to death. Mm -hmm. But... Brogan trying to show as much respect as possible for Glenn's tricks and creatures and just wants to keep his board contained. He might even be happy to trade Sarkin here with a combat trick. Just something to keep the raw resources Glenn's working with as low as possible. Joe's going to sacrifice the Flooded Strand. Three cards in the graveyard now. We know he's got a land, so Treasure Cruise is actually on for next turn. He can just untap next turn, and even if he draws just a land, can draw three. Yeah, five mana draw three is not all that exciting, but he's got to do what he's got to do, so he will cruise. Not only one card in the graveyard, there's three cards coming. Pass the turn back, Seeker of the Way among the cards, he's fouled. And just got a nope. Hard draws his card for the turn. You see the life totals here. Hard at 14, Jones at 19. A Temple of Malice can leave the top card on top. Will Brogan. Here's five more mana. It's Storm Breath Dragon. Sarkin's going up. And now Jones is under the gun. Yeah, this is eight. Next turn is another eight. So if Brogan has Lightning Strike, he can finish off the game. Oh, how quickly things change. Manic Influence, a couple copies of Seeker of the Way here for Jones. Going to pass the turn back, hoping he gets to play another turn. Hart going to draw a card. 
Lightning is, strike is, is what he found. I don't think Brogan had lethal before this turn, but I think he has lethal now. Mm -hmm. Sarkin is ticking up. This will be an attack for eight in the air. This is a lightning strike going upstairs, and that is going to do it. Broken Heart's going to win this match over Glenn Jones. Two games to one. Mardu Midrange takes down Jeskai Heroic Combo. For Jones, an innovative deck, but for Hart, a normalized deck gets the job done. Glenn's draws games two and three were not great. Not a lot of synergies, not a lot of explosion going on. And again, I think this is a tougher matchup for Glenn. Removal spells plus a very quick clock, you know, relative to the speed of the format, probably not what he wants to play against. So congratulations to Brogan Hart on the big W. Starts the tournament off 1-0 here in Oakland. So it looks like we'll be looking for another match here for you guys in just a moment, but I believe we're going to come back to the booth here as we do do that.